What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. I'm glad you guys are liking the 50 Jay-Z saga. Like I said, your donations is what made it possible. So, if you hit the cash app up, Carcino's the name in the cash app. Or, you can click the link in the description box. And hit the, um, the donate button and leave me a message in there. I'd, I'm going to be reading them today. Um, brings us to another situation. 50 actually spoke out about Oprah Winfrey. Now, he was in a big controversy with Oprah before because he dissed Oprah in a freestyle rap. And him and Oprah was able to squash their beef when she came after hip-hop. When he did a freestyle play this on the radio. And she was talking about hip-hop and all of these different things. So she came to meet, Oprah came to meet him at his grandma's house. So the grandma was there, was his grandmother was able to meet, you know, able to sit there and meet uh, 50 Cent. I mean, able to meet uh, Oprah. Now, Gail, who was a good friend of 50 Cent's, was very much the, the engine that put that together and over the years everybody has basically forgiven Oprah from that incident now what got people's crawl up in arms is when Oprah did this attack on Michael Jackson where she basically did an interview of the people that was accusing them, and they were like, why is Oprah attaching herself to this when she's the one that Michael Jackson gave the opportunity of having an exclusive interview with him? He chose Oprah when he could have chose anyone in the world, and she would do him like this. It let us know a lot about where Oprah is right now in her station. People are like, oh, Oprah is so rich and powerful. Eh, when you're rich and powerful, you don't do things like that. That looked more like forced than non-forced. And more recent, she came out and made statements about Russell Simmons. And 50 Cent is just like, hey, you know, like, what's going on here? It's like... You omit people that's right in your face, like Harvey Weinstein, and you leapfrog past all these other people and go right to the brothers. I just want to know what's going on. What's up with that? You know, and that's 50's position on it. But for me, it's not surprising. This is who Oprah Winfrey is. And what's scary is that you think that own TV's network is hers. Nah, it's owned. Her superiors, she still got an answer to. And they don't look like Oprah. Look. Oprah admitted herself. When she was young, she wanted to be white. She said in an interview that when she was younger, she was thinking, man, I wish I was white because of all the abuse she used to take being a black woman, a black girl growing up. She just wished that she was white so she wouldn't have to go through such abuse. And let's go even further. 
Oprah Winfrey got her position not off the fame of black people. It was portrayed to us as if she did, and we loved Oprah because she was a black woman doing something that hadn't been done before. But she never made her bones off of us. Black people wasn't her bread and butter. Oprah Winfrey's demographic at that time, when she had her show, was 30 plus year old house moms. If you were in your 30s and was in the house, most black women weren't in the house back then. They were working when Oprah came on television. There was no DVR. So if you didn't have a VCR tape to record the shows, you didn't see Oprah. She made it off Caucasian housewives who sat at home and watched Oprah. Her high demographic marks from the 35 on up was where she made the majority of her tick. Black supported Oprah. She was on the Jet magazines, Ebony magazines, and did all these black events. But black people won her demographic. Phil Donahue is the one that really launched her into prominence on television. And then as Phil stepped down and retired, Oprah came up and started doing his thing. So, Oprah didn't come out with the classy show she did now. Oprah's shows used to be the white nationalists versus the black reverends <laughs> from the hood. And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I don't understand why you guys are fighting. <laughs> so she was a Jerry Springer before Jerry Springer. See, you guys didn't know that. You guys think Oprah just had this classy show. Then she would take these phone calls live on the show just to stir the pot up. We're going to take this call, caller. Hey, I'm just saying, that guy, number three, sitting in the middle chair, yeah, if I was there, I would have punched you in the face by now. How dare you talk to your mama like that? <laughs> so all of these things was going on, and this built the nostalgia of Oprah Winfrey. She would do this show for her Caucasian folks, then would do some black television show, like the Women of Buster's Place or The Color Purple, and relate back to us. So therefore, she was playing both sides of the fence. Now Oprah's super wealthy, she has her own program. She started to step on toes of people who put her in power. So when she aligned herself with those guys and when they gave her a position, she feels obligated to do things for them because she has no choice. She owed somebody and those superiors are collecting. So you think she's going to speak out and talk about Epstein, Weinstein, or any of the other Steens out there? Nope. But Bill Cosby, all she could talk about old Bill. She could talk about Russ 
and she could definitely speak on Michael Jackson who's no longer here to defend himself so let's just take shots at him anybody with a moral compass would have said what the hell and smartly for them HBO took down the documentary for effective immediately effective immediately they took it down made it unavailable to watch and got rid of the Oprah interview why did you do that why would you get rid of the interview hmm why would y'all take it down so fast you realize without because you guys didn't do any due diligence you didn't realize one thing You didn't realize that these kids were lying. You didn't go and do your due diligence. You didn't care about it. Why wouldn't you? I mean, if I have a big major platform as Oprah has, my concern would be I got to make sure it's done correctly if I'm going to do this. Right? Then you got to think about the Monique situation and how we thought at first, man, Monique, you just overreacting. You know, you're going at this, you know, because of what she did with your family and you really taking this to the heart. And then you look at all this other stuff that's been going on. Right? You got to go back and re revisit that Monique situation, don't you? And said, wait a minute. <laughs> I kind of understand it now. So. People, y'all got a decision to make. I've already canceled though. She's been gone, done to me since the Michael Jackson situation. No more olive branches. You done broke them all. Over here. But the rest of you, y'all got decisions to make. It's your boy Carcino. I'm out. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell and select all. And don't forget cash apps. And you can donate to the page by clicking the donate button. I appreciate all the love and support, man. I'm out.